welcome to the second episode of the Aggregator Shopify app podcast. For today's episode, we have with us Vishwesh Shetty. Vishwesh is a founder and a Shopify app developer. His apps have over 15,000 users. In today's episode, Vishwesh speaks with us about his journey in the Shopify app ecosystem, how he comes up with his ideas for his apps, his plans moving forward, and lots more. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of the Aggregator podcast focused on Shopify app development. Really exciting episode up here today. We have Vishwesh with us. Um Vishwesh, do you want to quickly introduce yourself just for the benefit of all our listeners? Yeah, sure. So so about me, I have been in Shopify app store ecosystem since 3 years now. So I've done a lot of micro SaaS applications. So I have right now four apps on Shopify. two of which are doing good and there are about 15000 merchants using my apps right now and yeah so one of the one of the apps that work for me was instagram feed app which is the most used app from my list of apps and uh, recently i've been active on twitter and i'm doing some uh, things around app store marketing so over the last over the last three years i've learned a lot about shopify app store marketing and that's what i like teach to other people uh, share my knowledge about nice very interesting and excited to dig a little deeper into that um during this podcast so just to get started what led you to the shopify app ecosystem okay so about i used to do freelancing before that and i once worked for a once worked on a project through upwork uh, it was about integrating facebook api to an existing shopify app so at that time i got introduced to shopify ecosystem and then I realized that uh, in Shopify, compared to other platforms like WooCommerce and all, there are more paying customers. So, and there is a these paying customers are monthly paying customers, not like one-time uh, paying customers. So, I realized there is a lot of potential here, and if I could get an app here, I could probably get uh, bring in some side. It was like a side hustle and bring in some extra income. So, then I did couple like the first app I did did not do that well. and the second one i did it was around whatsapp chat button it was a simple chat button on shopify storefront and that was doing good it used to grow like 100 to 200 dollar month on month so that's how i got introduced and then i realized it has a lot of potential then it it used to be my side income but then i realized uh, other people like they are really making good good money in it and i should focus more on it then i went in full time and focus more on shopify and left my servicing business Well, wow. nice. Um, so you said you worked on an app before the WhatsApp um help button yeah, as yeah. well. Just curious, how do you sort of choose which ideas you want to work on or which pain points you want to try and solve with your apps? Okay, so the first time I got introduced to Shopify uh, ecosystem, I I was thinking about new like most of my apps are basically built on new features or APIs that come in different social media or different platform. so one of like whatsapp introduced wa.me link which was basically a link that you can use to chat with anyone so when they introduced that i thought it has a put like this can be used by shopify stores or stores to directly for people directly get in touch with them so then i thought and there were no apps at that time uh, doing this so there were whatsapp share app uh, sharing application but there were no whatsapp application that would link directly to speak to the merchant so that's how i started whatsapp application then uh, in- instagram released instagram stories api so there were a lot of feed app like instagram feed apps but there were no apps doing stories so then i thought this is a space i can be and then i did a google sign up application so google uh, created a one tap sign up system and i thought this can be used like a lot of different uh, like trip advisor uses it medium.com uses it so i thought this is something that shopify stores could also use so so most of my apps have been like different platform when they release something new new feature or new api i see if there is a potential in shopify to integrate it and it is something that e-commerce stores would need and then so this helps me be first in that space so now there is like there would be more one tap sign up application on shopify stores but then i am the first mover here that got it got it um very interesting so you know one of my one thing that i'm curious about usually when you when you're a first mover in a sort of space or you're working on 
a app based on a feature that's just launched. Um, you know, there's possibility of like things going wrong, many challenges. Uh, what would you say are just some of the biggest challenges that you faced when you launch your apps or even after? Okay. So, but frankly, for me, the one of the biggest challenges initial days was, uh, so I was not, so I didn't knew App Store marketing that well. I was like, it was like the side hustle for me and it used to generate a revenue and it used to grow on its own. People used to find the application installed and I just had to do support. But uh, when my WhatsApp application, when it was growing, so I reached down like $1,500 monthly revenue. And at that time, that lot of applications came in in that space, which were uh, totally free. So at that time, I did not know how to, how do you compete with a free app on App Store? And people, and obviously Shopify stores looking for app, they'll obviously prefer a free one. And then I did not focus on my App Store ranking and I fell in ranking. And then that app got stagnated at particular MRR. So that was like that. Then I realized that I need to be more focused. Then if I want to stay there, I need to learn how to do App Store marketing, how to rank higher on app, uh, Shopify App Store and what are, how to uh, optimize this, uh, optimize the listing for certain keywords. So, so that was a really setback for me because uh, like if that, if other app did not come in on that, like during that time, my, in the first app itself would be around 10 KMR right now, 20 KMR right now, because like I raised two KMR in, in a, like six to eight months and it was growing at 200 to $300 per month. But because the, I couldn't understand how to deal with competition, that time I lost to the competition and then that app got stagnant. This is something that I learned later on and I uh, now I understand like even if now a free app comes in or if there are more competitor app comes in, I know how to handle it. I know how, how to uh, position myself, to price myself to handle that. So that was a challenge, initial challenge. There's also like a lot of other developers will feel like bringing a new app, it's very difficult to get initial set of users. Uh, so one of the things that needs people need to take care of is like when they are building an app, they need to see that people are searching for something similar to it or exactly it. So probably you can do something on TikTok and you know that people are searching for any, something like TikTok feed or TikTok pixel, anything related to TikTok. So you know that people are searching for it. Then you can make an app. If you build a very niche app that no one is searching for, it's very difficult to get your first set of users. Interesting. Got it. That actually perfectly leads into my next question, um, which is what role does marketing and customer service play in sort of growing out your app versus just purely focusing on quality of the app itself? So in terms of Shopify apps, customer service is very critical because the way app store has been set up, you need reviews to rank and reviews the only way you get reviews is customer service. So Shopify has smartly placed it in such a way that no apps can survive on App Store without giving a good customer service. So you have to have a good customer service that converts into reviews. So that is a critical pillar. Like it's not something that you can do only initially and then leave. Like when at any point of time, if you uh, lose out on customer service, your app ranking will go down, your installs will go down. So that is a consistent stuff that you need to do with any Shopify app. And in terms of marketing, uh, there are two ways to do it. Either you do uh, app store marketing where you get inbound leads, where people know searching for your, like searching for a feature which your app does, or you can go outside app store, you can do content marketing. So there are people who go, like instead of searching on app store, they'll search on Google. So like how to integrate Google Analytics, how to integrate XYZ with Shopify. And if you can do a good job in Google content marketing, you can rank higher there and then re and redirect them to your app store page. Uh, other than that, you uh, you have to reach out to, you have to manually reach out to the bigger store and set up sales. You need a sales team for that's more complicated approach. So the easiest one, if you're starting, if you're just an individual, I would say like focus on app store marketing. If your app store is strong, you don't have to go to custom uh, stores to ask them to install your application. They will search you, find you, and then use your application. Got it, got it. Um, do you ever use any performance marketing channels like Facebook, Instagram, or is it primarily focused on just Shopify app store marketing? 
uh, you mean to get new in installs to get new installs yeah so i've tried reddit ads uh, sometime but uh, the problem with it was i was not able to understand the ro uh, ro i'm getting for those ads it's because uh, like there are a lot of people see it and you don't you are not able to track if they are coming to your website they are they are coming to your app they are converting because shopify app like app store is something that you cannot control they are it's on their uh, it's on shopify so you don't know how many people are coming in how many people are installing in and then how many people convert into a paid customer so it was very really difficult to understand so i so i did not continue with reddit ads but i have seen lot of uh, other apps doing reddit uh, like very strongly because you get a community of shopify uh, store owners over there so that is something that you can uh, explore facebook and instagram it's very difficult to target shopify store owners because very few owners are there you like you'll miss uh, your targeting will miss and you will be targeting to wrong people so it's very difficult to find uh, exactly the community of merchants over there but uh, i think reddit works good and probably twitter also is something that you can explore makes sense um i know we touched upon this earlier when you were talking about pricing of app when you were talking about keywords um and when you were generally talking about features but what are some of the best ways you or what are some of the practices you sort of implement to differentiate yourself from the competition so uh, what i think is like there are two ways to build an application you can either go for a feature rich app or you can go for a very easy to set up and very quick and simple to use if you are going or doing a feature rich app it's very difficult to make it simple unless you are like really excellent in ux that you can put so many features in it and still make it easy to use but mostly either your app will be feature rich or your app will be very simple to use so i go with the uh, i go with simple to use one so i made my application so easy to like i reduce every touch points so that could create a bounce so i make it very simple so it it, it takes less than 30 seconds to set up my app on the uh, website so like you don't have to go to your theme you set uh, like select the widget and install by default i do the by default placement i do like i set all the default values so that everything uh, you just put your instagram username and your app is you can see the feed on your website then further on you can customize based on whatever you want but uh, so my approach is more of a like make it very simple to use so uh, since i am like one developer one like i'm single person managing everything and the companies i'm competing they are like uh, they have a team of developers they have a team of for support so i will not co compete with them on features because of course if i add like three options they can add five more options so what i want to compete with them like this is on making that simple so so that's that's what differentiates so i am able to retain more people who install the crowd may be less, like my target audience becomes small and medium stores but still that's enough because there are a lot of stores and like there are around 15000 stores using my app and 5000 stores who are paying for that so that also like i can either go make a expensive app and get 100 stores or i can make a cheap app and get 5000 so so both works like in the in the end the revenue comes to uh, somewhat same number so i go with the so what differentiate me is basically i've done i've been able to make a very simple app that is very quick to use and very easy to use for merchants the voice is not sorry um so yeah very interesting i i sort of agree with what you were saying um in terms of just understanding what your competitive advantages are compared to say like a larger organization or maybe yeah, you know exactly. um an agency that has several sort of developers and a building apps um just um you know looking forward looking to the future what are some of the things that are exciting you about the shopify app ecosystem in general so so right now i see a lot more interest on shopify app uh, ecosystem like so initially when i got introduced it was easy to get like you could find sectors where were, there were no application you could find areas where there was very less competition and what people used to do is like put put in a free application rank higher and then like uh, eat the market but now the thing is now, now there are a lot of good application in each sector 
So now you cannot just build a, like you cannot build an upsell app and then rank it because there are already 20 upsell or 30 upsell application. So now if like there are a lot of people coming in, more people coming in now, but now you'll have to give a good quality application and also think something more than the, you cannot do a copycat application. You cannot just do, there is something that works to just copy it and then put it on app store. So that will not help now. You'll have to add some kind of feature or niche that will uh, that will make you stand out. So, and the one more thing I really, like I feel now is like there are a lot of applications and merchants do not want so many applications in their website. So, so there is one option they go for all in one kind of application, but then that is also gets too complicated to manage for them. As in, you have ten features in single app. So, so people like. like People will go towards like uh, merchants will go towards a particular set of feature, uh, which but it takes care of multiple things. It's like if you are doing for marketing, they'll go for a marketing app that takes care of WhatsApp, SMS, and email altogether. Because right now what's happening, they have to go for email to Clavio, SMS to somebody as uh, email uh, to some, uh, WhatsApp to somebody as, and these these applications do not talk to each other and. That is something that's also missing in Shopify courses. Like you are the customer data is across multiple apps. So I think shop like some merchants want Shopify to create those applications, but like whatever application Shopify has created so far, they are they have not been able to match the third party apps. So so that would be interesting to see how these things turn out. Like how merchants look for new applications and how Shopify comes up. How even third party application compete with Shopify apps and how things work out over there. Makes sense. Um, I agree. It, it is a very exciting time for the ecosystem. And we're sort of seeing that in the growth of the number of apps um, on the app store as well. Um, Mishwish, just before you, um, or just before we end the podcast, what advice do you have from for anyone, for developers trying to start out in the Shopify app ecosystem? So, so if you're an individual who wants to get into Shopify App Store uh, ecosystem, so what I would suggest is uh, you look for ideas first and then whatever idea you get, you look, uh, look into the App Store and see the competition and the reviews. So you want to be in a place where the review count is high, but the competition is less. So what it, uh, what it uh, means is like the review count high equals to high install rate. So that means there is a demand for this kind of application. And... Uh, High less number of competition means there is a potential for you to be, uh, go there and then capture a part of the market. So for instance, you can if you do an upsell application or email marketing application, so there will be a lot of competition. There is a lot of reviews, there will, there's a lot of install, but the competition is also high. Or if you do a very niche application, you will not have any competition, but then you can see that the other people who have done that application, they, are, they do not have reviews, which means there, there is no demand for it. So you need to be at the sweet spot where there is a demand and there's a less competition that will give, make it easier for you to market your application to be found on app store. Nice. Very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you so much Vishvesh for spending your time with mm -hmm. us and answering all these questions is very, very valuable insights and hopefully our listeners will find it useful as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.